good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session <clears throat> we welcome all the online students from tirupati i am very happy to see the students in karnool today and the students from vizag dr mannu krishnan after a long time i am seeing dr mannu from mandya medical college and uh, from the guntur and uh, dr amrita etc etc so since monday we had been discussing ent ideally we should be able to finish by today all the high yielding topics but on tuesday we had an interruption that's the reason we lost one day so tomorrow according to the plan we need to have a subject test we will have the subject test on monday in the ent 2 to 5 and 5 to 8 we will have a discussion tomorrow we will have as usual the regular class to finish the remaining topics in uh, the ent so what are we going to do today today we have uh, totally about uh, eight topics to discuss so already we have finished uh, anatomy laryngeal cancer otosclerosis etc etc now nasopharyngeal carcinoma is one of the favorite topic of the examiner we welcome our jabalpur students also who are participating today evening now it is more common in china particularly in the southern states of taiwan in the case of india it is not that common but for in the northeastern states is what we need to appreciate now in india lot of housewives in rural india have the habit of burning the wood in order to cook the food so poly cyclic hydrocarbons in the wood and the uh, agarbatti can also be a predisposing factor according to the risk factor analysis <clears throat> now uh why it is so common in uh, china in china you eat anything that flies creeps or crawls so salted fish contains nitrosamines which are the important carcinogens which can predispose to the development of uh, the nasopharyngeal carcinoma so this is the typical location we are talking about already in anatomy you have an idea this is the hard palate soft palate and uh, here you are having uh, that part of the pharynx close to the nose which is called nasopharynx so here you have the nasopharyngeal carcinoma now <clears throat> if a person is taking a vitamin c deficient diet that is also another important predisposing factors in india nasopharyngeal carcinoma is relatively rarer but for uh, in the northeastern states northeastern states now if you look through the laryngoscope how does it basically look like here you have the right eustachian tube orifice and here you are having the tumor in the vault of the nasal nasopharynx this is the septum and the floor of the nasal cavity so this is what you are able to see which is the nasopharyngeal cancer now uh what is the etiology it is seen more commonly in case of uh, china that means there must be some genetic susceptibility epstein barr virus one of the favorite mcqs in the exam is a virus which need to be remembered in relationship with nasopharyngeal carcinoma what is the most common type of histology another favorite mcq squamous cell carcinoma how do you recognize squamous cell doctor keratin pearls as what you can see is uh, one of the important features so squamous cell carcinoma kind of a histology is very very common <clears throat> now grossly if you look at uh, nasopharyngeal cancer 
you have three kinds of uh, patterns in which the tumor presents. One is called proliferative, where a polypoid tumor will be filling the nasopharynx. Second is ulcerative, where epistaxis is the common symptom of the presentation, or it can be infiltrative, where it can infiltrate submucosally, is what need to be appreciated. Now, <clears throat> how does the uh, mesopharyngeal carcinoma basically spreads? So what is the site of origin of nasopharyngeal carcinoma? There is an area which is called as the fossa of Rosenmuller. See doctor, you have the Eustachian tubes orifice. And uh, very closer to that you have this fossa of Rosenmuller. This is the commonest site of the origin of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. It is one of the favorite MCQs in the entrance exam. Now through the foramen lacerum it can be able to spread intracranially and it can lead to compression of multiple cranial nerves. One of the favorite clinical vignette in the UPSC combined medical services exam. A 55 year old individual is presenting with uh, uh, multiple cranial nerve palsies. Which malignancy do you want to suspect? What is your answer? Nasopharyngeal cancer is what you have to basically remember. <clears throat> Please check Mr. Manu is having a problem with uh, the audio. Is it the problem with others or for the others is the audio okay? Just find out. How is the volume of the audio? Now, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, the nasopharynx has a lot of lymphatic drainage. That's the reason the involvement of the lymph node is very, very common in the case of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. <clears throat> now, how does it basically present? Common age group is between 5th to 7th decades. Males are three times more prone to develop nasopharyngeal carcinoma than females. And if you look at the symptomatology, you can uh, broadly divide the, it into symptoms due to the nose, nasal obstruction. Then you have uh, clinical features because of the problem in the ear, otologic. Then you have uh, uh, multiple cranial nerve palsies. Ophthalmoplegia can be the presenting feature, etc, etc. <clears throat> now, let us take up uh, each of them. Can you, can you get me a different mouse? This has a problem. To move the slides. Can you change the mouse with this? Yeah. Now, can you get one more bounce? Yeah. Now, what are the important nasal symptoms in nasopharyngeal carcinoma? The nasal obstruction, nasal discharge and uh, rhinolalia clauser, which is a denasal speech. This is one of the favorite questions of the examiner. What are the various causes for the rhinolalia clauser, nasopharyngeal carcinoma? And epistaxis also can be another important presenting feature which you need to fundamentally remember. Then what are the important... Uh, otological features. There can be an obstruction to the Eustachian tube by the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Because of that, there can be development of conductive hearing loss. Any Eustachian tube obstruction can lead to serous otitis media. 
in a good number of people serous otitis media can also be the presenting feature of nasopharyngeal carcinoma similarly there can be tinnitus or giddiness and what is the very important rule anybody who presents with a unilateral serous otitis media who is in the age group of 50 to 70 is the one in whom you need to suspect a possible nasopharyngeal growth is what I want to underscore to all of you. In children, serous otitis media is not uncommon because of the eustachian tube dysfunction or young adults. But in elderly people, if there is a serous otitis media, unilaterally you should suspect the possibility of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Now what are the important uh, ophthalmoneurological features? Out of all cranial nerves which can be compressed, um, <clears throat> it is the cranial nerve 6 whose paralysis is most common among the various cranial nerve palsies. So patient can develop squint, diplopia because of the cranial nerve 6 involvement and third, fourth and sixth involvement can lead to development of ophthalmoplegia. And the cranial nerve 2 at the apex of the orbit, optic nerve involvement can lead to the development of blindness which can be one of the important uh, presenting feature. Similarly, the nasopharyngeal cancer can be able to grow uh, into the jugular foramen and can lead to the compression of the various cranial nerves. What are they? 9th, 10th and 12th cranial nerves they can very much be compressed once the jugular foramen syndrome prevails in the case of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Then retropharyngeal lymph nodes can become very much involved uh, in nasopharyngeal carcinoma and even there can be involvement of hypoglossal canal, Horner syndrome, anything can be the presenting feature. So this is another common question in the exam. Which malignancy can be one of the predisposing factor for uh, Horner syndrome? One you already know, Fancos tumor, bronchogenic carcinoma. The second one, nasopharyngeal carcinoma also can lead to the sympathoplegia, leading to the development of the Horner syndrome. Now, doctor, out of the various clinical manifestations of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, which is the most common clinical presenting feature of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma uh, is uh, one of the common questions. Cervical node involvement leading to the development of cervical lymphadenopathy is the most common presenting feature is what you should be able to remember. Commonly it is at the angle of the jaw where there is a development of the cervical lymphadenopathy. <clears throat> Very good. Our Dhavangiri students are asking, Sir, you said today we will have an ENT surgeon who love to teach, uh, take the class. But our ENT surgeon uh, had been held up in the hospital in the last moment. Eh? So he pleaded that uh, on Monday when you conduct the uh, subject test, I will carry on uh, the discussion on the subject test. So, Dr. Murthy is an excellent teacher and a very busy ENT surgeon. So, he will be uh, honoring the session on Monday for uh, the discussion of the subject test. Okay, now, nodal metastasis, if you see, 75% of the patients present with cervical nodal metastasis at the time of the diagnosis. Now, doctor, the most common histology is squamous cell carcinoma. But WHO has basically classified it into type 1, type 2 and type 3. But in the WHO classification, it is the undifferentiated carcinoma, which is called type 3, is the most common type of this nasopharyngeal carcinoma is what you have to basically remember. Now, in the WHO classification, one more commonly asked question. Epstein-Barr virus is associated with which types? It is a type 1, I mean type 2 and type 3. You find uh, a very high rate of uh, association with uh, Epstein-Barr viruses. 
Now, what is the challenge in nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Any head and neck cancer, the main issue is TNM staging. In nasopharyngeal carcinoma, if you look at the nodal status, N classification, it is different from that of the other head and neck cancers in a peculiar way. Lot of times when an MCQ is asked in the exam, they will basically ask in relationship with uh, the small differences in TNM staging only. So what is that? If there is an enlargement of the lower neck lymph nodes in the supraclavicular fossa, typically such patients of nasopharyngeal carcinoma have been placed under N3 category is what need to be remembered. You also have seen laryngeal carcinoma in classification in our earlier class. Can you be able to put on the fan? Yeah. Then, if you look at the upper cervical lymph nodes, there is a very less weightage which is being given for the upper cervical node involvement in case of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Most of the malignancies in the head and neck area, what is the golden number you need to remember? Up to 3, 3 to 6, more than 6. If the tumor size is typically 3 to 6 centimeters, if you look at the earlier other cancers which we discussed, it is being placed under the N2 stage. But in the case of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it is typically categorized as N1 is what you have to basically remember. Then one very important area that you need to know in relationship with the nasopharyngeal carcinoma is uh, supraclavicular fossa, which is also called host triangle. What is supraclavicular fossa? Three points, middle end, lateral end of the clavicle and the point where the neck meets the shoulder. If there are any enlarged lymph nodes in this triangle, irrespective of the size of that lymph node, it is being categorized as N3 in case of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma is what need to be remembered. Now doctor, what is the treatment? Irradiation is the treatment of choice. We use the super voltage therapy around 6000 to 7000 racks and uh, uh, you have treated the primary surgically, but if there are persistent lymph nodes, that also becomes an indication for doing the radiotherapy is what we have to fundamentally remember. Similarly, if there is any recurrent tumor or a residual tumor, then you need to give a second round of external radiation or you need to give a brachytherapy. And in the modern era, what is the special scenario in uh, managing the cancers located in the deeper aspect of the calvarium, you can do cryosurgery through the palatal fenestration in certain subset of population. Is there any role for chemotherapy in nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Yes, sir. Stage 3 and stage 4 cancers. And uh, generally stage 3, stage 4 also any squamous cell carcinoma, radiotherapy is best and surgery if it is amenable. So you will be giving radiotherapy primarily for the stage 3, 4, but if you combine that with the chemotherapy, then the response rate will be improving. So that is the whole idea. So we use the cisplatin or cisplatin with 5 fluorouracil in the management of uh, the nasopharyngeal carcinoma in the stage 3, and stage four is what I want to underscore to all of you. So tell